Now to Asia, where some very significant developments are underway. You already know about the war clouds over Taiwan and China's aggressive drills, which are still on. Now, this is forcing their neighbors to step up defenses. Our focus tonight is on two countries in particular, two Asian powers, South Korea and Japan. Today, South Korea kicked off a major military drill with the U.S. It is called the Ulchi Freedom Shield. This is their largest joint military drill in years. The last time something like this was done was in 2017. So it has taken them five years for these allies to resume this exercise. Why now? To project strength. They haven't shared many details about the latest drills, but we can tell you what the previous editions involved. Tens of thousands of troops and a large number of aircraft, warships and tanks. American and South Korean troops practice joint attacks, frontline reinforcements of arms and fuels, fuel in fact, and removing weapons of mass destruction. South Korean President Yoon suk yeol said he wants his troops to be prepared for modern day warfare. Wars today are quite different from those in the past. Enemies will certainly conduct cyber attacks on national information and communication infrastructure and attack key industrial bases such as ports, airports and nuclear power plants, high-tech industrial facilities including semiconductors and major raw material supply chains to neutralize our ability to wage war. This Ulchi exercise will be a starting point for the government to reorganize its emergency preparedness in line with the changing war patterns. Yoon's immediate worry is North Korea and their seemingly endless missile tests. But he also has an eye on the bigger threat, which is China. As a presidential candidate, he had promised to buy more THAAD missiles from the U.S. THAAD stands for Terminal High Altitude Area Defense, T-H-A-A-D. It's an American missile defense system. You could say this is the American version of the S-400. In fact, they tried to sell the THAAD to India too, and they tried very hard, but India went with the Russian system. South Korea, of course, has been a long-standing American ally, so they bought the THAAD. The first installments came in 2017. It's not clear how many missiles Seoul has today, but President Yoon wants to get more, and China is not happy about it. Recently, the foreign ministers of China and South Korea met, and China had a clear message for Seoul. Do not buy American missiles, they said. During the meeting, the two foreign ministers had another in-depth exchange of views on the third issue, making clear their respective positions and enhancing mutual understanding. The two sides agreed to attach importance to each other's legitimate concerns and to continue to handle and control the issue prudently so as to prevent it from becoming a stumbling block affecting the healthy and stable development of bilateral relations. China says the THAAD in South Korea undermines its security interests. It claims these American missiles can target Chinese airspace, so it wants South Korea to limit the use of these missiles, which is a bit rich coming from China, which routinely violates the sovereignty of its neighbors, which maintains an aggressive posture, which keeps conducting menacing military drills, but wants others to respect its concerns. Well, South Korea may not. Japan most likely will not. It is arming itself against China. Japan is considering more missile deployments, and by more, I mean at least 1,000 long-range missiles. That's according to one report. Right now, these missiles can travel up to 100 kilometers. Japan wants to modify them to increase their range by 10 times, from 100 to 1,000 kilometers. Japan already has these missiles in its stockpile. So there are no new purchases involved. This deployment will be to counter the threat posed by two neighbors, China and South Korea. The missiles are supposed to act like a deterrent. They're expected to be deployed around the Nansei Islands. These islands are at the boundary between the East China Sea and the Philippine Sea. As you can see, Taiwan is close by, but Taiwan is not the target. From the Nansei Islands, Japan can hit coastal areas of North Korea and China, potentially, and Beijing only has itself to blame for this escalation. Its aggression has brought the US, South Korea and Japan together, now more than ever. Last week, they conducted a drill off the coast of Hawaii. This was an anti-missile drill. Beijing asked the three countries to stop such exercises. Maintaining peace and stability on the Korean Peninsula is in line with the common interest of all parties. All parties need to show goodwill and meet each other halfway. 
The negative impact of the military exercises on the situation on the Korean Peninsula is worth paying attention to. All parties should act prudently and stop any actions that may increase tension and confrontation and damage the mutual trust of all parties. The U.S. and South Korea are doing more drills this week and Japan is planning to deploy, deploy more missiles. China may or may not invade Taiwan immediately, but it has certainly increased the risk of war in this region.